طيب بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and upon his family and his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance into the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim glory belongs to you ya Allah Verily we have no knowledge except that which you have taught us. And indeed you, Ya Allah, you are the all-knower and the all-wise. You are the all-knower and the all-wise. Allahumma inna na'udha bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yakshar wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min du'a'in la yusma' Verily Ya Allah, we seek refuge with you from knowledge that has no benefit and from a heart that has no fear. And from a soul that has no satisfaction nor contentment, and from a dua that goes unanswered, and from a dua that goes unanswered. To proceed, Ikhwan, Fakunna Mutakalimina an Shayin ma min Fanni Ta'alimina al Lugata al Arabiya, al Lugata al Arabiya. So, the last thing we discuss, Ikhwan was some small affairs with regards to learning the Arabic language with regards to learning the Arabic language طيب فكنا نأخذ المصدر من الفعل و بدلنا أو بدلنا الفعل للمصدر. So the last thing, إخوان, that we're doing, we were deriving the مصدر, the verbal noun, from the verb and replacing the verb with the verbal noun and replacing the verb with the verbal noun. تعلي اللغة أو لغتي. Arabi طيب. So we mentioned for example the verb no let's make this bigger inshallah. The verb wasala. The verb wasala. طيب. معنى wasala to arrive, to reach. And we mentioned that the meaning of wasala is to arrive or you could say to reach to arrive or to reach طيب والمصدر من وصل الوصول and the مصدر المصدر المصدر and the مصدر the verbal noun المصدر the verbal noun the masdar of wasala is al wasul al wasul al wasul so the masdar of wasala is al wasul or you can say wasulun wasulun Arriving, or you can say arriving, uh, arrival. Usulun, arriving. طيب. فكنا نأخذ المصدر من الفعل. So, 
What were we doing, ya ikhwan? We were deriving the masdar from the verb and replacing the verb with such masdar. فمثلاً, فمثلاً, قال, متى تصل? متى تصل من أمريكا؟ من أمريكا. نضيف الحركات. Let's add our vowels, يا إخوان. متى شبيتا. متى تصل من هذا الشيء بيكسر من أمريكا طيب when did you or when do you arrive from America طيب متى تصل من أمريكا؟ طيب الآن انظر إلى فعل تصل So now look at the verb تصل تصل هو المضارع من فعل وصل تصل is the present tense verb from the verb وصل تصل يبدأ بالتاء لأن التاء حرف الخطاب So it begins with the تاء Because the تاء lets you know That you're talking to someone طيب So ما تتصل من أمريكا When do you arrive from America الفعل وصل The verb here is وصل 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 الآن سنبدل تصل للمصدر So now we're going to substitute وصل for the مصدر So now instead of saying متى تصل you're going to say متى وصولك وصولك من أمريكا متى وصولك من أمريكا متى وصولك وصول طيب ليش بين فتحة واحدة دوانا يا اخوان متى وصولك من ام ما آه يبدون بسم الله من امريكا so now it becomes when is your arrival or when is your arriving from America? So the meaning changes slightly. When is your arrival or arriving from America? So we changed the verb. We replaced the verb. We substituted the verb for the mustar. No. Is that understood? Sorry. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa huwa fasihun jiddan. And it's very eloquent to do that. It's very eloquent to do that. Tay. Faqala istami' wa raddid. Listen and repeat. Listen and repeat. Istami'a wa raddada. Istami'a. Means to listen. Raddada means to repeat. Five. Yumkinuka an takhruja. It's possible for you to leave. Yumkinuka an takhruja. It's possible for you to leave. Five. Al fi'lu kharaja. The verb is kharaja. Nubadilu kharaja lil mastar. We're going to substitute kharaja for the mastar. Then he says, يمكنك الخروج. يمكنك الخروج. Now it becomes leaving is possible for you. يمكنك الخروج. Leaving is possible for you. طيب, كملنا هذا يا اخوان. We completed this already, بحمد الله. 
نأخذ جملة ثانية مراجعة. So we take another sentence as review, inshallah, before we start the new lesson, inshallah. طيب انظر هنا يا إخوان. Look at the next sentence. يمكنك أن تدخل. يمكنك أن تدخل. طيب. The next sentence he says. Write this sentence down, يا إخوان. يمكنك أن تدخل أن تدخل طيب يوم بسم الله وعيدنا يوم كينوكا أن تدخل it's possible for you to enter. 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 كنا يا إخوان أن فعل أمكنا نترجمه to be possible. We mentioned that the word, the verb am كنا am كنا means is translated to be to be possible or he is able he is possible it is possible to be possible a new word ikhwan 25 times naktubu kullu kalimatin jadidatan 25 marra 25 marra so remember ikhwan our principle that we write every new vocabulary word 25 times. So the verb am kana means to be able, to be possible. Tayyip. Yum kino ka. Yum kino ka. Yum kino ka. Becomes it is possible for you. For you. يمكنك أن تدخل. It is possible for you to enter. يمكنك أن تدخل. It is possible for you to enter. طيب. أن is to. أن to. N is two. N tadakula to enter. N tadakula to enter. Five. فالآن سنبدل الفعل للمصدر. So now we're gonna substitute the verb for the مصدر. So the مصدر المصدر لدخل هو دخول دخول. So the verbal noun the مصدر Of Dakhola is Dukhulun is entering. Dakhola means to enter. The verbal noun Aladi Yukhadu min fairly Dakhola Dukhulun. So the verbal noun that is derived from Dakhola is Dukhulun. Is Dukhulun. فنقول الآن مثلا so we say now for example we say now for example يوم كينوكا الدخول وعليك السلام ورحمة الله so now we say يوم كينوكا 
الدخول يمكنك الدخول so now we say entering is possible for you السلام عليكم وعليك السلام كيف أنت يا شيخ الحمد لله I was listening on Facebook not to interrupt the class but what new word did we just you just say Um, it wasn't actually a new word. We had it in the previous lessons. Amkana. Amkana. The verb amkana. To be able. To be possible. Amkana. No. Amkana. Okay. Amkana. No. Uh, to be able. To be possible. Uh, uh, not to be able. To be possible. Okay. No. Oh, okay. All right. I heard you just mentioned the word a few minutes ago. And uh, I, I may have mentioned that it was new, but going back in my mind, we are actually had it a few lessons ago. So it's not technically new. No, but it may be new for some of us. Alhamdulillah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Tawai. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Salam shi ikhwan. So let's continue, inshallah. Tawai. قال ثالثا thirdly حول الجمل الآتية كما في النموذج so he says uh, change or alter the following sentence the following sentences as it comes in the example النموذج the example طيب أخذنا هذه الكلمة قبل يا إخوان So we took this word some lessons ago. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We took this verb some lessons ago. Or we took this word rather. Annamu the Jew. Annamu the Jew. Uktubuha, Yaqwan. Write this word down. Annamu the Jew. Annamu the Jew. An namu the Jew. An namu the Jew. is the pattern. It can also be the example. No. An namu the Jew. An namu the Jew. So you say mathalan, for example, mathalan, I say sometimes, mathalan, mathalan, for example, right, mathalan. Another word you can say is namudajan, namudajan, namudajan is, for example, namudajan, they both mean or an example. Namudajan. You can say methalan or you can say namudajan. Toy 25 times. No. Toy. Bismillah. فقال المؤلف صدعاته he says حول الجمل الآتية كما في النموذج transfer or change the following sentences as they come in this example النموذج النموذج the example المسافر يريد الخروج so he says كيف يا إخوان المسافر يريد الخروج The traveler intends or wants, or you can say desires, al khuruj, leaving. So now we're going to change it. Al musafiru yuridu an yakhuruja. Allahu Akbar. So now he says, the traveler intends, wants, or desires to yakhuruja, to leave. Tayyip. Fal an, al an, sa namshi. عكسا كما تعلمناه قبل 
So now we're going to do the opposite of what we just learned, which is another tremendous way to, to master the exercise. We learned, for example, that we're going to go from the verb to the mustar. Now we're going to go from the mustar to the verb. Mashallah. So we're going to go from the masdar to the verb. Write this down, Yehwan. Min al masdar ila al fi'l. It's a very tremendous drill to do, Yehwan. So we're going to go now from the masdar, from the verbal noun, ila al fi'l. So now, write this down, Yehwan. So today's drill. We learned in the previous lessons, we went from the verb مَشَيْنَ مِنَ الْفِعْلِ إِلَى الْمَصْدَرِ In the previous lessons, we went from the verb to the verbal noun, the masdar. Now we're coming from the verbal noun, going to the verb. So today's lesson is from the verbal noun to the verb. That's today's lesson. So it teaches us, Yehwan, whenever we learn a verb, now what I want you brothers and sisters to do is learn the noun that is derived from that verb. So when you learn one verb, you're going to actually learn two words, the noun that comes with it and the verb. All right. For مثلاً, مثلاً, uh, the verb da-ra-sa. Darasa to learn, or you can say to study. To learn or to study. طيب المصدر من هذا الفعل the verbal noun that is derived from this verb is a few of them. One of them is دروسن. 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 Lessons. دروسن. Another one is the singular, darsun, darsun, a single lesson. Another one is dirasatun, dirasatun, lessons or classes. All right, all of these are masadir from the verb darasa. Sometimes the verb has more than one verbal noun. So now we're going to come from the masdar back to the verb. MashaAllah. So look at your screens, inshallah. Look at your books or look at your screen. لأصحاب الكتب نحن على صفحة 47 For those that have the book, we're on page uh, 47 If you don't have the book, you can also look at your screens As we bring the book on our screen طيب, Look at the sentence here, يا إخوان الجملة الأولى Sentence number oh, What happened? We just changed something Oh, what did I do? I don't know what I did. Hold on. I just lost the book. Why did my view change like that? Something I hit. So look at your sentence here, Yehwan. Now we're coming from the masdar, going back to the to the verb of that masdar. Taib. the first sentence? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Taib. He says, "Al-musafiru yuridu istikhraj al-jawazi." Al-musafiru 
يريد استخراج الجواز المسافر يريد استخراج الجواز the traveler wants or you can say intends or you can say desires استخراج الجواز he intends taking or deriving the passport طيب انظر هنا يا اخوان استخراج هو الاسم the word استخراج deriving or extracting or taking is a noun so now we're gonna use the verb that this noun is derived mashallah tremendous joy يا اخوان so now we're gonna say المسافر يريد أن يستخرج الجواز طيب so write this out يا اخوان ان شاء الله تعالى طيب so you're gonna say المسافر يريد the traveler wants استخراج is استخراء جاء الجواز الجواز طيب let's add our vowels المس... آه بسم الله المسافر يريد استخراج الجواز The traveler wants extracting or deriving the passport. So now we're going to نغير الاسم للفعل. So now we're going to substitute this noun, which is استخراجة. And we're going to use the noun that is that is derived from this verb. So it's teaching you, Yaquan, كل ما نمر على فعل نعلم الاسم الذي يخذ من. So it's teaching us that what every time we come across a verb, that we should stop and learn the noun that is derived from that verb. وكل ما نعلم اسما نتعلم الفعل الذي هذا أصل هذا الاسم. Likewise, when you come across a verb, if you do this in your Quran and your Sunnah, it's going to help you tremendously. Every time you come across a verb, try to learn the noun, which is derived from that verb. And when you come across a noun, try to learn the verb that is the origin of that noun. It's going to help you tremendously in your Arabic, يا أخوة. And that's another beauty or reason that we love this program more than the Medina, more than Bani Adek, more than Kitab al -Assas. There are many programs, ya khua, and every student, every teacher, every imam has their favorites. That's not the point. But to study one that encompasses all of them, mashallah, it's going to cut your time tremendously. So now, what's the fi'il min istikhraja? So what is the verb that is the origin of استخراج. So I write this down, يا إخوان. استخراج. Or by itself is استخراج. Is by itself. If it comes by itself, استخراج. The origin is استخراج. 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 This is the verb. So with the noun, we're going to learn a verb for every noun. Or with every noun, we're going to learn a verb. It helps you tremendously, Yahuwah. So istakhraja, istakhraja means to derive. Or you can say to extract. To take out. MashaAllah. So now, نبدل الاسم للفعل. So now we're going to substitute this noun for the verb. So who can do that, ya Juan? Who wants to give it a try? 
We're going to substitute istikhraja for the verb. I'm going to give you a hint. You're going to use it in the present tense. You're going to use it in the present tense. So now you're going to say, for example, you're going to say, Al Musafiro. Yuridu. And you're going to bring N. Yuridu N. The verb is istakhraja. So you're going to make it the present tense. You're going to say, yes. Stakhrija. Yes, stakhrija. Al jawaza. Al jawaza. So we add our vowels. Al musafiro. Yuridu. N. Now you add the present tense verb. Yes, stakhrija. Al Jawaza. So the meaning changes slightly. Now you have the traveler wants to becomes wants to extract, derive, take out the passport. All right. Um, so when you want to bring a verb into like the president, so you have you, you have to use yeah. That's a good question, yeah. Why the question is not easy. It's not on us to use the yeah on the basis of the context. You don't have to use the yeah. It depends on the contents. You remember that first or second chart we memorized, and I told you, brothers and sisters, it was the key to verbs learning that chart. When you're gonna, you're talking about who, he, him. Her, me, you, those two, us. This where the, the pronoun comes in. The ya represents hua. If you're talking about a female, it would have been ta. If you're talking about yourself, it would have been a. If you're talking to someone, it would have been ta. That first chart. Go back to the earlier, earlier lessons, ya khuan. That's one thing we always mention to ourselves and to the brothers and sisters. Ahamiyatul maraja. That is so imperative to review your khuan. فَعَلَيْنَا عَلَيْنَا عَلَيْنَا أَنْ رَجَعَ That is upon us to make the review. And you constantly, constantly, constantly have to go back. Especially living in the West. We don't get to practice Arabic that often. No one speaks Arabic anymore. For example, except some of the students and the people of knowledge. Now all of the classes are in English. The Jumu'ah is in English. We talk English in our houses. English in the masjid, English at work, English when we get together. So when are we going to learn Arabic? So we have to do more. We live in America. We have class th three times a week. That's not good, ya khua. We hope Allah doesn't punish us for that. That's a little. We're never going to learn Arabic three days a week. But it's a start. And we hope Allah gives us the honor to do more than that. At any rate, so we have class three days a week. We have to do more. When you learn, you always have to go back and keep it fresh, like your Quran. You learn the surah, if you never recite the surah, it's going to leave you. You never teach the surah, it's going to leave you. You don't go back and rehearse and make the maraja'a of the surah, it's going to leave you. فَلَا بُدَّ مِنَ الْمُرَاجَعَ لِكُلِّ فَنٍ مِنَ الْفُنُونَ So it's imperative to make the review with every science. القرآن والأحاديث وتعليم اللغة والمصطلى في كل فن every science يا إخوان whatever you're learning you always have to go back and go back and go back that chart and we ask you to write it I believe 10 times go back to that chart and rehearse it and teach it back, I saw it yeah you, I know it's imperative yeah. إخوان no Alhamdulillah well we'll give you an easy way to do this lesson يا إخوان we'll make it easy طيب عندنا الآن الحجزة طيب look at the sentence here يا إخوان طيب he says المسافر يريد حجز المكان طيب write this down يا إخوان I want you to write these verbs down طيب we have استخرج استخرج 
جا استخ را جا Next word, next verb you're gonna write down is hajaza. What does it mean hajaza, ya khwan? For remembrance. Kayfa notology mu hajaza. How can we translate hajaza? One of our earlier, earlier verbs from the beginning of the book. Hajaza. One of our brothers on Facebook, what's the verb hajaza? How can we translate hajaza? He traveled. Ah, uh, close. Safara, you're talking about Safara. Ah, right, right, Oh, you're talking about fun? Safara. No. Toy. What's the next verb he gave us, Yahuan? Toy, how so la? Next verb, write these verbs down, Yahuan. Ha, so la. How so la? One, two, three, four. Alright, we'll give you five verbs, inshallah. Istakhraja, hajaza, safara, how so la? Give you one more, inshallah. Kataba Kataba Alright, so now we have five verbs And then a khamsa to afa'al Five verbs Five verbs Alright, awwalan alayna nahfadha hadihi al-afa'al Firstly, we have to memorize these words That's number one This is the first thing, Yaqwan. We have to learn the words first. For our new sisters, our new brothers that we have, Yaqwan, and then Ba'du Shurut, we have some conditions in our lessons. Waminha Kitabatu Al Kalimati Al Jadida. And from our condition that we encourage is that we write the new words. 25 times. So if this verb is new to you, don't cheat yourself, Ya Khwan. It's okay not to know. Myself. It's okay not to know. When you're reading the dictionaries and you're learning the books of the ulama, you're reading the ahadith, you're reading the Quran, you come across a verb, you don't know. Put it in your notebook, stop and write it 50 times, 25 times, 100 times. Because the goal of knowledge, true knowledge, is not have not having a lot of information. That's not the that's not knowledge. Many of us get caught up, and we think, oh, he memorized this, she memorized that, that he's knowledgeable. No, that's not the point, yeah, Juan. Knowledge is not a lot of narrations, like a Shafi'i used to say. Al ilmu leisa kathrata arwaya, walakin al ilm al khushia. As a Shafi'i used to say, knowledge is not having a lot of things memorized. That's not knowledge, Yahuwah. We think that's knowledge because of our low level. Because we're just starting out, Alhamdulillah, we're just memorizing Quran and Hadith. We're just studying the Fiqh and the Sul al-Fiqh. We're just studying Tafsir. So we think, us, us, us. But the people of knowledge, having a lot of narrations is not knowledge, Yahuwah. Anyone can memorize. That's not knowledge. Knowledge is that which is worked by. That's knowledge. Like Ashraf used to say, knowledge is the fear of Allah, that thing that brings you to the fear. As the mother of Sufyan al uh, she stopped her son, Sufyan, and she says, Umdur, fi kulli asharati, fi kulli asharati al She says, stop at every 10 hadith that you write, that you memorize. This is his mother, mashallah. Stop at every 10 ahadith that you learn and look and see if they increase you in the fear of Allah. SubhanAllah. And if they do, then continue. And if they don't, then go back and learn them. You still have that, you haven't learned them yet. 
So it's not about having a lot of not a lot of things memorized, yeah, khwan. Many of us we get caught up, oh, the brother said I gotta memorize the Surah Talatha. Some of us on that level, that might not be a good book for you right now. For example, what's the benefit of if you don't have a lot of Quran memorized, you're gonna to try to memorize Usul Talatha? That doesn't make no sense at all, yeah, khwan. And none of the people of knowledge say that. Not one. Someone doesn't have Juz Amma, Juz Tabar, a nice portion of the Quran memorized. And he's going to try to memorize the words of a tremendous Imam? No, you're going to focus on the Quran. And once you get a nice portion of Quran down, or the whole Quran down, or a nice portion of Quran, now you memorize a hadith. Or at the same time, you learn hadith in Quran. But you're never going to start memorizing Mutun if you're not uh, proficient in Quran. You don't have no Quran memory. It doesn't make no sense, Ikhwan. But that's our level, our level, where the brother doesn't have a lot of Quran and he's going to stop his Quran memorization and try to memorize Kitab uh, Usul Thalatha. No, it doesn't. That, none of the people of knowledge say that. As most of, them, most of them are going to say, how much Quran have you learned first? And if you say, oh, this surah, that's, if you have a nice amount of Quran, they may say, alhamdulillah, no problem. Memorize this book or start with that book or the likes. But no one is going to say, put the words of any great imam or the likes before the Quran. No one. But many of us, we're still learning how to learn. You know, we just learned a book because someone told me to learn the book. I'm going to take from this sheikh because someone told me to take. I don't know him, but someone told me to take from him. That's not knowledge, Yahweh. You have to learn who the ulama are. Learn what's their methodology. Learn what are they calling to. Learn who are their ulama. Learn. But many of us don't do that. We don't read the biographies of the mashaykh. We don't do that, Yahweh. So we have to still learn how to learn. Many of us are just regurgitating what someone taught us. That's it. We haven't checked it. We haven't verified it. We haven't done any research. We don't do that. And that's why our level is the level that it is. Can I ask for a question? Yes. 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 For these words here, do they have root words to them? And if so, what dictionary would you recommend that uh, we learn from when you're giving us these type of words? Uh, for you brothers that have the book, yeah, Juan, even before you get into dictionaries, if you go to the back of the book, you're going to see a nice beginner but detailed uh, fihris or a uh, glossary that has almost every verb or every noun that we learn. So I believe I sent all of you the book, Yehwan. If you don't have a copy of the book, just remind me, I'll send it to you, your email again. But I believe you all have the book by now, alhamdulillah. You go to the glossary of the book and you should have the fihris, the glossary of the book. It's easier than dictionaries right now and it's the words that we have learned. So it may stick with you easier. But going back to your question, I'll give you two dictionaries to at least try to get Yaqwa. And you can get them on PDF. Or you can buy them, mashallah ta'ala. For the brothers that may not have the funds, you can get them on PDF. The first one is the Hanswear. I don't know if that's correct, Yaqwa. The Hanswear. That may not be correct. That's green, book? That's green yes. I just seen that book too. No. I don't know if this is the correct spelling or not. So I don't quote my spelling F1. Hans where? No, like, no, I know what book you're It's one about. volume. The only like, this book has its positives and its negatives. Like a lot of dictionaries. No dictionary is gonna have every word. It's impossible. You're gonna have a bookshelves of dictionaries. Right. At any rate, the Hanswear, one of the beauties of the Hanswear is that it's going to have a large amount of the vocabulary that you're looking up, alhamdulillah. One of the negatives of it is that you have to know the root. That's why a lot of students don't benefit from the Hanswear 
because you have to know the origin of the verb. For example, our first verb for tonight is istakhraja. Istakhraja. If you look it up in the hands where under alif, you're never going to find it. If you look it up under the scene, you're never going to find it. The origin of this word is khoraja. 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 This should be a kha. That's the origin. So one of the negatives of the, not a negative, but one of the disadvantages of the hanswir is that the students who don't know how to derive words yet, it's going to be difficult. You have to look at the root word of the verb. So the first one that you get is the hands where. The next one that you get is one of my favorite Juan, and also has its disadvantages, but it has its advantages also, is the morid. Al morid. The morid. And try to get the latest edition as it comes out every couple of years. The morid. Get the Arabic to English. Then also have English to Arabic also. The mode, it's one of the advantages of the mode it is that you don't have to know the root. You just look up the word as it, as it comes. You don't have to know the root. So the word is stakh or raja. Is stakh or raja. This should be a tayakwa. Is stakh. Is stakh or raja. You look it up just as it comes. Is stakh or raja. You look, you go to alif. And you're going to find istakhraja. So that's a benefit. It helps out a lot. You don't have to know the root. Another benefit of the hands way, uh, of the motor, that many, many students overlook is it does something that the hands way doesn't do. When you look up the verb or the noun, it's going to give you a synonym in Arabic of that word before it translates it. And that's tremendous. So now you're not learning English through Arabic, or rather Arabic through English. You're going to learn Arabic through Arabic. So for example, you look up the verb jalasa, jalasa, right? Jalasa. It's going to say jalasa, and beside it is going to have qa'ada, qa'ada, which means jalasa. But... It's going to give you another Arabic word first that has the meaning of the word you're looking up. And then it's going to say to sit. To sit down. So this is a tremendous benefit. You're going to learn Arabic through Arabic. So now when you look up Jalasa, it's not just going to go like the hands wear and say to sit. It's going to say Qa'ada. So every word you look up, you're going to learn another word in Arabic. Mashallah. So these are two books that are sufficient for now, Yehwan, the Hanzwe and the Mode. If you busy yourselves with that, mashallah, that'll be sufficient. So what would be the um, the negative on Al Mola? Moded. Moded. Uh one of the negatives of the Moded Yehwan uh, is that you don't have to know the root. It makes it easier, but it's kind of negative because it's uh, is it's not a once you get to that level, is no way to practice learning the root. As the hands wear, it, it keeps you on your toes, keeps you fresh, which is sort of. But another thing with the mold it is that uh, some of the translations may be a lot. For the beginner, like it may say, for example, jalasa, and give you one word, qa'ada, and then it's going to give you a paragraph, which is tremendous, but can be overwhelming for the beginner. Sometimes learning a two or three of the meanings is sufficient. And as you progress, your meanings progress, your translations progress. But sometimes you, you jump right in and it's overwhelming. You try to learn baqarah in one night. You're going to give up. But if you go ayah to an ayah, verse by verse, then alhamdulillah. Another uh, disadvantage of the mode is that uh, 
for example, it doesn't teach you the different scales like the Hans Word does. They're kind of like the opposite of each other. That's why I mentioned them together. If you, if you study from both of them, they're going to complement one another. But if you just use the Hans Weir, you're not going to get the benefits of the molded. And if you just use the molded, you're not going to get the benefits of the Hans Weir. Use them together, you're going to be true. But okay, I like so, the molded better. Okay, so one last question before you, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. But um, how would you attack the Hans Weir? far as, for an example, like you just gave, Mm -hmm. on the word and then you gave the root word how would you if you was um using that how would you get to knowing what is the root word um you just have to learn it um if you go back to some of the charts that we gave in the earlier lessons when we started out with the three letter verbs that's the origin learning the asl learning the the fi'lun thulathi the 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 triliteral verb, that's the origin. So you try to learn that first chart, for example. That first chart, yeah, Juan, if you skip it, you're going, to, you're going to be regret. It's like going to the gym and not, not warming up. You may hurt yourself, you know. You may, you know, not maximize your workout. Same thing in Arabic. You know, some of the essential points, for example, learning the, the origin of the verb, is fa'ala. Many students skip this, but this is major, ikhwan. To know that the Arabs, they use as their origin the verb fa'ala. Why does that help you? Because every verb is going to be under this scale. The fa means the first letter. The ayn means the second letter. The lam means the third letter. So when Shaykh Utameen is explaining Ar-Rahman, for example, in Surah Al-Fatiha, and he says it's on the wasn uh, of uh, when he says, for example, Ar Rahim in Surah Al Fatiha, and he says it's on the wasn Al Fa'il. Fa'il, you don't know what he's talking about. He's using all he's saying is that is on the shape of Fa'il. That's it. But he's using Fa'ala, because that's what the Arabs use. So Ar Rahim is on the shape of Fa'il, for example. So you have to learn that first chart when you get to verbs. Verbs are tricky. This for most students. You're gonna know are you really trying to learn Arabic when you get to verbs? If you stop and it's too much, and you just want to learn the same four verbs that everyone learns, fa'ala jalasa and kataba, and that's it. Because it's too, it's a lot of work. Arabic is rough, Yahwa. Yes. But as Muslims, we should study Arabic because without it, our knowledge is going to be deficient. If you always remind yourself of that, it's going to help you. It's going to give you another hour, some more days, you know, before you lay down. It's going to help you learn 10 more words a day, five more words a day, for example. But we look at Arabic like it's, it's all right. It's okay if I study it. I don't need it. No, we need Arabic. And that's the difference. We don't think we do. In a lot of spell. But yes, you have to learn the root first. That's the origin. And all of this can be found in the book, right? I know. Okay. So let's finish it, Juan. So I'm giving you five verbs. So what I want you brothers and sisters to do firstly is write these verbs. We don't have class again until Monday. So I want you to write these five verbs 25 times. That's step number one. And then the second step, I would say the second step for Monday. First is to write these words 25 times. That's what I want you to do. Yeah. Write each word don't rush. Take your time. You know, is write these verbs 25 times. And try to have them by the next class, by Monday. And then the next step is deriving the noun that comes from the verbs. But we can't derive the noun if we don't know the meaning of the verb. So first I want you to write them. 
طيب استخرج means to take out or you can say to derive Hajaza means to reserve has a lot of meanings to reserve you can also say to um, to put a barrier between something to reserve safara means to travel safara Hasala means to acquire, to obtain, to acquire. And kataba means to write. So, five words, Ikhwan. You don't have to do them all tonight. It's better if you do, but we'll make it easy. You don't have to. That's fine. By Monday, write each word 25 times. It's going to help your writing. It's going to help your memorization. Remember, the goal is not the writing. That's not our goal. Writing is a wasila. It's just a means. That's it. If you don't have it after you write it 25 times, write it 10 more times. Write it five more times. And say it while you write it. For example, say it. Istakhraja to take out. Istakhraja to derive. Istakhraja. Say it while you're writing it. Hajaza to reserve. Hajaza to reserve. Hajaza to reserve. Safara to travel. Or he traveled. Safara he traveled. Safara to travel. It's going to help you. For example. No. The verb would it be. Uh, the fa, the last two letters, safara. What do you mean? What is the root word in safara? The root word would be safara. Take the alif away. Take the okay. Okay, because uh, that's three letters. Okay. I don't know. Okay. And then to attain, that's the. That's the verb itself, right? Correct? Yeah, that's the root itself. Okay. No. Right, no I, okay, I kind of understand what you're saying now. I know. Remember the three-letter oh, verbs? The yeah, that's the root. When you start adding the letters, like this one here, when you start adding the letters, that's the, not the root. The root here is khoraja. No. That's the root... <clears throat> Does the root and the law album does it always come at the end of a word if you add it on like you said for the first one? No, no. No. Sometimes it can be in the beginning, sometimes it can be in the middle, sometimes it can be both. Okay. And uh for you. Oh yeah. So we stop the Yahwan. That should keep you guys busy, inshallah. Find us up to from in Allah and Akhtat of Menafsi. Anything we said that's correct is from our Lord. Anything that we said is incorrect is from ourselves. What does that come out of Hiram? Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. One question. Tell uh, When you said the hands were, which one you said to get? If you can try to get both. If you can get both, get both. If you only can get one, if you have to choose, I would say get the molded. No, no, I mean, you, you, you said get the. Try to get the newer Arabic to English or yeah. English to Arabic. Try to get the Arabic to English okay. and Arabic to English. try to get the newer one. Like um it's gonna tell you the year of the publication. Try to get the latest ones. I okay. think it's like a 2017 one out. Try to get okay. that one. No. Okay, so as long as I'm getting Arabic to English, not exactly. English to Arabic. Hey no, you'll be fine. Okay. No. Right. I'm gonna try to look them up tomorrow. All right, Sheikh. Barakallah, people. Wa fiikum, wa fiikum, barakallah. And then I have another brother. I have another brother that want to sign up. Okay. Inshallah. Tell you. All right, Sheikh.
Amin wa ya wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh